Yo, what is up, people? James back here, and welcome to the first episode of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon's Singles Battle Spot. This is a series I did for the original Sun and Moon, where I just go on the Singles Battle Spot and basically try to learn some singles. I'm not good at singles by any means necessary, but it's a really fun format, and it's just fun to play different formats, take a little break from VGC. This isn't going to be updated as much for my VGC series for those who... Do watch my VGC series, don't worry, this is like side content, it won't affect VGC uploads in any sort of fashion. And it's just like extra content, it, you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, we use QR code teams, I link them down in the description down below. This is a really, really interesting team. Oh no, like I haven't played singles in really forever. I play OU a few times, I might just, I might bring OU to the channel as well. But, yeah, they're going to be side. VGC is the main stuff. Like, all the content you can expect mostly is going to be, like, VGC, some Pokemon tournament, Kid Icarus Uprising, and uh, Singles Battle Spot will be, like, side series. So, yeah, this is going to be some interesting stuff. Now, I never, I haven't played Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon's OU yet, but I heard Naganado or... Naganado. I don't know how you pronounce it, but I heard it's broken. I heard it's broken in OU, as we already DC. Great start. But I heard it's absolutely broken, and it was quick banned. You know, Nasty Plot, it makes sense. You have Nasty Plot, you get the speed boost, which can make it really hard to revenge KO. It's got really great coverage for singles. Yeah, it's pretty solid. So, we're going to be trying out a team with it. If you want to try out the QR code, I will link in the description down below. But anyway, I think I'm going to cut it here till we find another game. So we'll be right back with the first game of the series. All right, we got the first opponent, a 1457 rated player from Japan. But what I learned about Singles Battle Spot is no matter who you're facing, it can be really scary. Singles Battle Spot is like really competitive in general, just like how many people there are. And even like the lower ranked players are really scared to deal with, or maybe it's just me not knowing what to do. We have our first opponents of Blacephalon, Zerkatry, Pukamuku, the Galisopod, Delmise, and Salamence. So Mega Evolution would be Salamence, it looks like. Uh like Naganadel just does so much work here. It actually does so much work. Of course I have to worry about if I do basically get brought down to his focus house. Galisopod can revenge KO it. So I gotta be really careful about how I wanna set it up. Uh let's see what's good. I think there are a lot of things that could do work. Let me check my sets real quick. Bandit Bulu. Stall Toxapex. Standard VGC Celestila. Marowak with Lightning Rod, which actually doesn't seem like a bad lead. Uh, but I really just don't like facing that. Okay, Blacephalon seem, uh, seems actually really scary against me. I think I want to actually lead Naganadel. Toxapex is a pivot. I think I'll try out Marowak here. I don't know how this is going to work. I haven't played singles in forever but and i never used this team before so we'll see if i can actually do decent here i'm really worried about blacephalon though like blacephalon is not exactly the best pokemon for this matchup i feel like because yeah it just does so much damage pukamuku is actually gonna take the field oh that's actually kind of scary so pukamuku gets light screen not light screen. I think it gets mirror coat. Oh man. It gets quite a few things actually. I think I'm actually the place to go to Toxapex here. Yeah, the place to go to Toxapex and get a Toxic off because this Pokemon is a thread with its ability inward out if people don't know. Basically, if you KO it, whatever HP that the Pukamuku Oh come on. Double team? That's a thing. But anyway. The amount that Pukamuku was on before it got KO'd is how much HP it will take away from your health. So it's kind of like Aftermath if anyone has seen that ability except there's no limits on contact and basically it takes away whatever HP set the Pukamuku was on from you. So Toxic is always my play here. I'm hoping I can at least land one. 
yes, I land one, and that should secure it, because I don't think Pikamuku gets rest or anything. So, get that Toxic off. Okay. Wish I had T-Spikes. Oh, come on, you're a Lumberry? I have to hit, I have to hit one more. Well, luckily, it's only plus one stage of evasion, but not for the first episode, man. That's not fun. You just keep throwing out toxics. Unfortunately, I only have ten of these. Well, nine. Okay, we hit the second one. Nice. Now, I don't think Pikamuku gets anything that can get rid of status, unless it does get rust. Yeah, it keeps going for the double team. Honestly, I could probably just set up on this Pokemon right now with my Noggin Adele. So I'm actually going to go hard Noggin Adele, I think, because Pikamuku really doesn't get anything that can touch Noggin Adele. And I could just nasty plot up. Like, there's not much my opponent can really do. If you want to switch, that's fine. You lose these stupid, stupid evasion boosts. So I, I will take this. Give me the nasty plot up. I will just plot. Like, I'm plotting right here. We got this strategy in mind. Let's go. Okay. So, not gonna do. Gonna be on Nasty Plot. I guess I do have to worry about Scarf User. I don't know if Pikamuku can break my Sash, though. I really don't know. It doesn't get Encore. At least I hope it doesn't. Yeah, it's just double teams. I'm guessing double team Toxic, maybe Soak, so you can Toxic a Poison type. I uh, know, I'm just going to keep setting up because he shouldn't have anything that can really revenge KO me. And I can just probably, after the second Nasty Plot, just sweep through my opponent's team. So, my opponent can keep Nasty Plotting up. I mean, my opponent can keep double teaming. But at, sooner or later, you will go down. Please don't have rest. If you actually have rest, like, oh man. I feel like Pukamuk, this Pukamuku has rest somehow. Should go down to one more toxic turn. I could try to... There's no point of trying to hit the Pukamuku at this rate. Because of the fact it's at plus 5. Just let the, let the toxic do the work. And I don't want my sash to be broken. Oh, I forgot about Baton Pass. Oh my lord. I 100% I, I forgot about Baton Pass. Zerkatry. Okay, so I don't think Zerkatry has a move that can two KO me. Maybe Thunderbolt can. I need to hit one. I hope it's not Z Hypnosis, and if it is Z Hypnosis, please miss. Oh, nice. Okay, we are lucky. Goodbye, Zerkatry. <laughs> Gone, and I think my opponent should just click the forfeit button right here. Beast boost plus six knock in Adele plus one in speed. Oh man. Okay. You're definitely screwed. Blast the pod. Yep. I got super lucky. That's just me forgetting about Baton Pass on Pikamuku. Sludge Wave. And yeah, with the sash, I was gonna win anyway, so yeah. Not exactly happy about facing double team. Did get lucky. I hope that's not actually a common thing. I don't think it is. But I actually don't. I really hope evasion isn't, or accuracy, isn't a big part of singles battle spot. I mean, I haven't played in forever, so I wouldn't know. But I don't think that's common. But we're going to move on to the next game. Luckily, we hit the first sludge wave, which is absolutely amazing. Because I didn't have to worry about the hypnosis. I didn't have to worry about sleep turns, potentially. I mean, most likely I would have been able to get two chances, but at plus six, I'm guessing my opponent was. I guess I should have went for the attack there instead of boosting. But I didn't want my sash to be broken. Then Glycopod somehow knocked out Naga Nadel. Got our second opponent with a Naga Nadel of their own. Amoongus, Aerodactyl, Lanus, Barian, Mimikyu, and the Salamence accompanying it. Four? Wow, five ice weaknesses. I wish I had an ice time move. <laughs> Yeah, so Ben, let's see, Ben and Bulu doesn't do much. Two potential Mega Evolutions, Aerodactyl and Salamence. Toxapex can kind of do work. Amoongus is really annoying to deal with. Not gonna do is looking really good here. Also really like Celesteela. Celesteela can do a lot of work. 
I think Celesteela with Nagin Adele. And I'm kind of leaning towards Toxapex since it can be a wall. Marowak is also not a bad option. Volcarona. Actually, this Volcarona should actually be able to do some work. I think I'll go Volcarona. Just because Marowak's slower than most of my opponent's Pokemon, I bet Landers can knock it out. Salamence definitely knock. Well, probably knocks out both of them, to be honest, with Double Edge. Mm, I, I think this is okay. Like, I was thinking Toxapex because... Well, I don't know what kind of set the Toxapex is. I don't know if it's, like, physically defensive or, or especially defensive. Like, if I knew that, maybe, like, it would have leaned toward my decision. Because a physically defensive wall would be great here, to be honest. Let's see what my opponent's going to opt for as a lead. Aerodactyl, okay. Maybe get up Stealth Rocks, or it's just offensive. I know... You know, singles basketball doesn't really run stealth rocks as much as, you know, singles. But, you know, I got this Celesteela in. Celesteela's in a fantastic position. I'm not sure if you want to stay in with Aerodactyl, to be honest. Maybe go hard Amoongus. I kind of just want a lead seat, to be honest. Because even Amoongus comes in, I feel like it's alright. As Aerodactyl is going to switch out to Amoongus. Landorus, okay. So, I was, I don't know if they, okay. Like, this is where my singles knowledge is really lacking because I know, I know OU and singles boss is completely different from OU. So, I don't know if they run defensive landers. But right here, I'm just going to be able to get all this little bit of chip onto this landers. Heavy Slam looks pretty fine. I'm pretty sure Nog and Adele might be the last Pokemon. So I'll just fire off a Heavy Slam. Landers doesn't have anything. Maybe get a, its rocks or just go for a U-turn, which is fine. Because I get a Heavy Slam on basically anything. Could have protected there, but I didn't want like to face like a Sword Stance, a Continental Crush set. Which I don't know if it's still common, but it was common pretty early in the early Sun and Moon meta in OU. Yeah, my knowledge is really lacking for this. But that's why we play this. We're learning. We're learning the meta. And this is another competitive meta. It's actually... Very popular. It's really popular. As Nagin Adele does not want to take two heavy slams. That's a fact. So, heavy slam. Oh, it actually does. Hmm. Oh, boy. I definitely want a Leech Seed here because even if I Heavy Slam, like, it's not really going to do too much. I mean, luckily, I do have a Focus Ash Noggin the Dell, which can really help against my opponent. As, yeah, Nasty Plot up and then probably go for, like, Fire Blast. I need to hit the Leech Seed, though, which is, like, the one thing. Okay, we do hit. Nice. So, am I especially defensive Cell Steel? I think that's going to come down to whether I am. I don't know what they run. I mean, this definitely has a lot of HP investment. This looks especially defensive. I bet I could live a Fire Blast unless it's Life Orb. Or Fire Am. I'm going to go for Heavy Slam. Flamethrower, okay. Ooh, that... Oh, come on! The burn, really? So Heavy Slam's not going to KO now. And not even close. Uh, but maybe this was the incorrect play. Maybe I should have gone into Volcarona, sacked it, went into n uh, my own Noggin Adele, tried to KO this Noggin Adele because Salisilla could probably win against Landorus and Aerodactyl. Gonna protect. Just protect. Even if you nasty plot up, that's fine. Flamethrower. Because, like, Celsius was an important answer to Aerodactyl. Now I'm actually really scared of, like, Aerodactyl in the back. I think I might need a double here. I do think I might need a double here. Because I feel like Celsius I'm going to live Aerodactyl's attack anyway. Ah, uh, we don't get it. Flamethrower is going to come out. Yeah. Fire Blast actually might have just KO'd, which is actually kind of crazy now that I think about it. That's a nog in the Dell. That's not going to delve for you. Beast Boost. Okay, I forgot. Does Beast Boost allow me to... I think it's only when I use a move. 
Yeah, only when it knocks out a Pokemon. So the problem is I can't set up on Naga though. And get the speed boost at the same time, which is problematic. I do have to KO it here. So just fire off a Dragon Pulse is the best bet. I think I might have to rely on a Stone Edge Miss potentially. Oh, Z-Move. Devastating Drakes. I'm guessing that's Draco Meteor then. Okay. Yep, Devastating Drake. Gonna target down my... Not gonna Adele, but I am Focus Ash, which is... Okay. And I will get my beast boost. Okay. So maybe if I crit the air... Like, I'm gonna have to rely on a rock move miss. Like, that's how I win this game, I feel like. Because I have to quiver dance up so I can beat... Like, even then, I don't even know I can beat the Aerodactyl. Like, Volcarona, I don't think one-shots. Actually, I do have HP Ice. I definitely have to rely on a rock move miss, though. Aerodactyl's gonna come out. Man. Maybe I shouldn't have brought Volcarona. Toxapec wasn't good. Maroc wasn't good. Ulu actually would have been amazing, but it didn't make much sense against my opponent's team, in my opinion, with Amoongus, Salamence, and Naga So I have to hope basically for a Rock Miss at this point. I'm going to Dragon Pulse here. Weaken the Aerodactyl. Like, actually, no. Since you allow me to weaken the Aerodactyl, as long as I am able to... What's Aerodactyl speed stat? Mega Aerodactyl speed. I know his base speed is like 150, but I don't remember what it actually hits. That's going to be important for Quiver Dance numbers, too. That Quiver Dance really didn't do much. Earthquake going to come out. Also, if this Aerodactyl has a flying move, that probably knocks off Volcarona, unless I'm bulky. So I'm pretty sure I just lose straight out. Okay, Nogging Adele. Knocked out. Volcarona. Uh, let's see. Baramosa is what base speed? I mean, it depends on one whether this Aerodactyl is jolly or adamant. Isn't Baramosa like 140 something? Base 140, so it's like what? 225. I think I have to hope for a miss anyway, but if you have a flying type move, this game's over anyway. I'll just cover dance up. I have to hope for a miss with a rock move. Stone Edge does connect with the Volcarona, and that's going to be a good game. So, I think I could have played that better. I think what I should have done, the turn I went for Leech Seed onto Nagandadel, was switch out Celesteela, go out into Volcarona, sack it, go out into my Nagandadel, and I either get free damage on the Aerodactyl coming in, which is a two-shot, or I'm able to get the... Or I'm able to get the... KO on the Naganadel, which then in turn would have allowed me to go for a. Well, one, it would have kept my Celestia healthy for the Aerodactyl because Aerodactyl was the biggest threat, too. Like, I could just fire off Heavy Slams afterward with the Celestia, pick up a KO onto either Aerodactyl, uh, KO the Naganadel because I was intimidated the first time I used Heavy Slam, so it should have been able to KO. And, or Leetzee, the lander's coming in. And as long as I get one special defense beast boost, like, I don't think Nagandadel beats me and I can beat it. So, yeah, there were definitely mistakes learned, made and and uh, lessons learned. The burn also kind of sucked because I could have also sacked Volcarona later in the game. Because, you know, Celesteela would have actually been healthy if it didn't get burned. And then if I was able to... Survive one attack from the Aerodactyl, which I'm not sure if I could live Stone Edge, to be honest, but I think I had to go off that at that point, or miss. Like, South Sail could have put in a lot of work. So, our third opponent of today has a Charizard, Hippowdon, Primarina, the Thunder's Farian, Lucario, and Mimikyu. Okay. Primarina is usually Specs or Z-Move, if I remember correctly. Oh, if it's Z-Move, I do have to cut out the animation since it is copyrighted, unfortunately. Nagandadel just does so much work once I'm able to get a nasty plot. Like, look at Nagandadel and look how busted it can be. I have to weaken Hippowdon and the Thunder's Farian. 
What's a good way to weaken those Pokemon, though? Hmm. I think I won't... <sighs> I don't have a good answer against Thunder's Fairy Note and Marok, but Marok's pretty poor in the matchup. You know what, I'm gonna go Marok, Tapu Bulu, and I think Naganadel as my answers. Because Naganadel does sweep my opponent. If I can weaken the... I just have to weaken, actually, the Hippowdon. Like, Thunder's Fairy Note's not a problem. Well, if it's Scarf, it could be annoying. And I am... Like, the Grassy Terrain's actually really useful here. Like, Tapu Bulu and Naganadel are great because, one, I don't have to worry about Sandstorm residual damage always, like, breaking my Focus Sash because I'll be able to heal back with Grassy Terrain. So, Mera comes out. Charizard are going to lead. I can't tell if you're Y or X on this team. I don't know singles compositions. I know VGC compositions. I would assume it's Y. I could probably just fire off a Shadow Bone here. Because if I weakened... Oh, I have Stone Edge. Hmm. I think you would go out into Paladon, though, if anything. Primarina can't really take a hit. I'm going to Shadow Bone. And if I weaken Charizard, that's great for my Naganadel because Naganadel can sweep later. It is Charizard X. Okay. So, unfortunately, this wasn't the threat to the Naganadel I was hoping for. I wonder if you're going to set up or just Dragon Claw. Outrage. Okay. Straight up. Okay. Shadow Bone going to come out into the Charizard. That's still good damage. I'm going to go out into my Tapu Bulu here. Let's see. I don't remember if, like, with fairy types, like, if you outrage into a fairy type, you automatically snap. You automatically go into confusion, or if you continue your attack. Looks like he's still continued in his attack, I think. I think if that's how the game mechanic works. And he really doesn't have a good switch to Horn Leech, so I will fire off a Horn Leech. And if he does Flare Blitz here, I am a fool. 100%. <laughs> But I feel like he is locked into Outrage. I mean, my opponent is thinking so. Maybe he's not. Or maybe he's playing the, playing the game. Like, I'm pretty sure this is how it worked. I don't remember. Like, I remember Showdown, I think, had a problem with this. Oh, he could actually make a move. Okay, so we're going to see the switch out. Oh, my lord. Okay. <laughs> he's sacked the pound on, which is, like, the one thing that's stopping my Noggin Adele from sweeping. Because that's, like, the only thing I can't KO at plus two. Gone. So, it wasn't locked down to Outrage, and maybe my opponent made a really big overprediction. I just didn't know the mechanic. I guess now I know that. Because I honestly thought my opponent would be confused afterward. If it was, like, still lo locked in. If it wasn't locked in. Charizard are going to come out. Uh, I really... Tapu Bulu is useful. Marok really isn't. I'll sack Marok here. Even if Charizard gets a Dragon Dance up, that's fine, really. I'm not sure if you're going to Dragon Dance up here, though. Let's see. Yeah, just Flare Blitz is going to come out, which is okay. And then I get my free switch into Naganadel, and I click Sludge Wave. Yeah, Sludge Wave is always my play. Hits Mimikyu, Break his Disguise. I guess the question is how much it does in the end. Alright, Naganadel. I get a free Sludge Wave off. Maybe if I get a Poison... Because maybe you could probably still end up winning the game somehow. Sludge Wave is always my play here. It's Thunderous. It's Charizard. It's Primarina. Lucario's probably not in the game since he brought Megazard. Nice, they're going to give me Megazard, so I don't have to worry about that massive threat. Although, if it is Mimikyu in the back, I think I could still lose. Because you Sword Stance up. Like, this could still be a problem. Especially if you're Z-Move Mimikyu. Which you definitely could be. Oh, boy, I don't like my position if it's Mimikyu in the back. Oh, it's Thunderous, okay. So, Thunderous is okay, I feel like, because... Yeah, I should be able to 2 KO this. Just Sludge Wave. Get damage off. The only problem is if it is somehow that... 
bring me down to my focus sash, which I don't think you can do unless you're specs with HP ice. Or your agility, which is okay too. I'm focus sash. Nice. So my opponent's setting up because I think my opponent does need to set up here. Unless you have protect on funders for some reason, I should be good for the game. Because I have focus sash still attacked. So I can go for sludge bomb. Sludge wave. Because I'm guessing it's sludge bomb, focus blast, thunderbolt, or maybe HP ice. I'm still faster because of my speed boost. Nagana Dell is actually broken. Thunder's Barrier goes down, and that will be good game to my opponent. So we're going to be taking two wins, one loss in today's episode. Learned quite a bit, and I hope that was an enjoyable experience for the audience or whoever's watching Singles Battle Spots, especially if you came from my VGC side. But if you are new to the channel and new to my content, the main series I do is VGC. I'm a bit more of a professional player. Well, I'm kind of more experience with VGC in a sort of way so yeah I have you know competed at worlds in VGC so I'm more familiar with VGC so if you want to go check that out I'll link it in the description down below but if you did like this video show that like button some support especially if you want to see more singles balance on the channel I'm thinking about once to twice a week on the channel not exactly sure yet but if you do want to see some more singles battle spot, comment down below saying you want to see more. And feel free to hit that like button because it kind of shows me like who's interested in singles battle spot. But otherwise, you can check out the rest of my stuff, my social medias, other side series on this channel. You can check out my main series, VGC 2018 Back for Battles, where we do the championship battle spot ladder and play VGC games. And yeah, social medias, Twitch, all that good stuff linked down below. And again, if you want to try out this team that I've been using, go check it out. There's a QR code link down below. But otherwise, thank you all for tuning in. I will catch you around in another video. Thank you for watching. Good day. Have a good day, people. See you around in another video.